Today I'm going to take this copper bar and turn it into this leaf. But before we get to the final product, we've got to learn some techniques. I'm going to turn on the propane here. I'm going to get a lighter ready here. And I'm going to kick on this valve and then light that. We've got to taper the ends here. So I've got to have my hammer strike half on and half off the anvil, but at a 45 degree angle. I want this piece of metal to split the difference between my hammer face and my anvil face, so essentially 22 and a half degrees, and that's where I'm gonna strike it. So copper is ready to forge when it's at a dull glow. So right there is perfect. Nice solid strike, and I've created a flat spot there. I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees, create a flat spot there, and I'm just gonna go back and forth, and it's gonna bounce my hammer right off the edge of the anvil. And I'm not hitting the anvil, I'm hitting the copper. And as that gets a little smaller, I'll just reduce the strength of my blows. There we go. Now I'm gonna hang this over the end, and I'm again, half on, half off, nice solid strike right there. There we go, I'm feeling that shoulder, I'm pulling it towards me, it stops. And I'll just turn it and strike it again. Now I've got my two shoulders created, and I'm just gonna go back and forth between those and define them. That's awesome, right there. It's getting a little cold now. I've got some bend in here, so I'm gonna put it down right here so you can see the air space between the material and the anvil. And then with my flat die on my hammer, I'm just gently gonna take out that air space. There we go. I'm gonna put this back in the heat. So here we've got our two shoulders that we defined earlier. And with these sticking up, so that way and that way, I'm actually gonna set more shoulders in on this other side. There we go. Turn it 90 degrees. And so now I've got two shoulders on this side, exactly opposite to two shoulders on that side. And that isolates all the material that we're gonna need for the leaf. The leaf is from here up. And so what I've been doing here, if you can see this little high spot right there, and then on the other side, we've got a high spot right here. Every time I strike, I'm moving the hammer just a little bit closer, so I will hit that high spot and just knock it forward just a little bit. We're getting close to our leaf head, so I'm gonna come to this side. There we go, let's flatten that back out. But you can see again, We've got a high spot here and a high spot here. And so when I strike with my hammer, I just want to knock that down and push it towards the center just a little more. There we go. And you can see how we've drawn this material out. It looks like I've smashed the shoulder there, so we're going to go back and clean that up in just a second. And we're going to keep drawing this out. Flip to the other side. Awesome, awesome. Just straighten this whole thing out. Copper will work harden. And so over time, as you're hammering on this metal, it puts a lot of stress into it and copper will actually toughen up and you'll split it and crack it unless you can relieve all that pressure. So what you do is you bring this to a nice high heat where it's glowing really bright and then we're just gonna stick it straight into the water and cool it down. It's a process called annealing and it will relieve all that tension in the copper and you'll be able to forge it again. Perfect. So there we are. It gets a lot of really neat color back, and now it is just dead soft. You just bend it by hand. Look at that. So in order to do some more work on it, obviously we gotta put it back in the heat, but now it's crazy soft, and we're ready to go. So here we go. So I want to bring this down just a little bit more in dimension. And you can see that as I work it, it starts to bend that way. It's because of the direction that I am hitting this material. It will cause it to bend one way or the other. There we go. That is long enough, and I'm gonna stand this up on its corners and just start flattening these out. I wanna be really careful when I get up towards the head of the leaf, I don't wanna smash that. Now we've got this other corner that we're gonna work on. I'm gonna take the flat die on the hammer, because if you notice, there's a round side and a flat side, and I'll slowly roll, and I'll keep hitting just in different areas, and it's gonna round it out some. Well, I've got the leaf head hanging over the edge there, I can kind of work on that spot. Now let's get back to the rest of the stem. Nice, I think that's shaping up really well. I do want to make it a little bit more smooth looking. So I'm gonna put it in the heat one more time and then we're just gonna keep planishing that surface. I will do hundreds of these little taps as I planish the surface of this leaf stem. So I am much happier with the way that this looks. I really like how smooth that is. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this off. Just gonna pinch it a little bit more and a little bit more. And so now you can see it's starting to square off, but we'll just take that back out. We're probably good. There we go, and we can just kind of break it off at that point. 
I want to kind of clean up this sharp corner right here. Just a little bit of work there. Awesome. So I'm going to put it back in the heat and then we're going to flatten that out as it's going to spread out and become our leaf head. There we go. Now, we have moved the dimension of that metal so much that we've actually created a whole lot of stress. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat it back up, get it nice and hot, and we're going to anneal it one more time. You might wonder how to tell that there's so much stress in that metal, and the simple answer is you just have to know. You've got to get experience. I cannot tell you how many copper projects I ruined before I kind of got the feel for, well, what it felt like as you're hammering it and you just kind of feel it hardening up underneath. It's very subtle, but it's important to be able to get that feel so that you don't ruin your project. All right, here we go. Perfect, look at that, look how pretty that is. Great, well, we're gonna heat it up and we're gonna flatten it just a bit more. From here, what I wanna do is use these fullers. So they're like chisels that didn't quite make it in life. There we go, and so it puts that nice divot in there. So now I've gotta make that a little deeper and smooth it out a little more. Let's get it a little bit more heat and keep working. Perfect. Now this is a cool little tool that will help hold down my project. So that just tightens it. Now I can keep working. Now that I've got my main vein carved in there, I'm gonna take this other fuller that's smaller and start driving these in here. So you can see that we've got some copper color coming back. That is one of the telltale signs that your metal is getting cold enough as you're working on it, it's also creating a hardening effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the heat and anneal it one more time and then we'll keep going. Now technically, you can do the rest of the work cold, but it's a lot easier hot and you have a lot less risk of work hardening and cracking your piece. So I just pulled this out because I wanted to forge it, but I noticed there is a crack on the back. So even though I was annealing this thing, it's got this tiny little crack in it and that's because the tip right here cools down faster than the rest of this material. And so when I was originally pushing that leaf head that we isolated down to make it flatter, that was cooler at the end and I got a little tiny crack on the back that I didn't notice. You can't fix that. That's just gonna be there. Uh, but that's not a problem. With blacksmithing, every piece that you make is gonna be 100% unique and these little things that are problems are not really a problem. They're part of the art, they're part of the piece. Just get used to having something beautiful that maybe has a few flaws in it. It's really, really close to done on these fuller marks. I've got to do just a little bit more right at each of the edges, and then we'll be done there, and I'll get back to the stem. So now I'm going to heat up the end of this stem, and we're going to start working down here. So I just want to taper this end down just a little bit more. I've got my material angled up slightly. I'll flip to my flat die now. There we go. I realize it's still pretty hot, but this next step needs to be done very hot. I'm going to heat this up quickly, and we're going to curl it right over the end glancing blows until I get it to touch, and that's called a safety curl. It keeps the pointy end from sticking in your clothes, or your skin, things like that. We're gonna heat this up again, and I'm gonna start curling the rest of the stem. And this is just wherever you want it to end up. Ooh, maybe I wanna put some curvature in here. Yeah, let's do that. Here we go. I'll just bend it just slightly. There we go, that's it. Just a tiny little bend, and it gives it that nice recurve. Now it's time to heat up the whole thing and dunk it in the water. Look at that. As pretty as that is, I do think I'm gonna buff it and we're gonna bring out that bright, shiny copper color. So that's what it started out as, and that's what it finished as. So I actually make lots of little things like this. They're amazing as gifts. When people receive something that's hand forged, it just blows their mind. Because who owns something like that? It doesn't take very long. The materials here are probably less than a dollar. It's a quick and easy gift and people really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for another fantastic episode of The King of Random. Be sure to subscribe and remember, let the random happen.